in our last video on the collision theory and how it relates to the concept of equilibrium, we discussed the idea of how a reversible reaction will always reach the state of equilibrium, whereby the rate of the forward reaction becomes equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. In this video, we'll look at what's known as Le Chatelier's principle, which is a very simple rule that helps you predict how a reaction will manage to return to equilibrium when a change is imposed on it. Le Chatelier's principle specifically states that if a change is imposed on a system at equilibrium, the position of the equilibrium will shift in the direction that tends to reduce that change. The possible changes that can be imposed on the system at equilibrium are concentration, pressure volume, and temperature. We'll look at how each of these three changes affect the equilibrium individually. Before we go through each of the changes, I want to discuss the idea of equilibrium position. The position of the equilibrium determines the concentration of reactants and products in a reversible reaction. In Le Chatelier's principle, when we talk about the movement of equilibrium, we are really referring to the relative concentration of reactants and products. For example, if we say that the equilibrium shifts or moves to the right-hand side, that means the concentration of the product, which is on the right-hand side of the reaction, increases. At the same time, the concentration of the reactant, which is on the left-hand side, decreases. Vice versa, when we say that the equilibrium position shifts or moves to the left-hand side, the reactant concentration increases, and at the same time, the concentration of the product will decrease. So keep these two things in mind as we discuss each of the three changes that can be imposed on the equilibrium. We recall that changes in concentration affect the collision rate and therefore the rate of reactions. If the concentration of nitrogen dioxide in this reaction increases, then the system will respond in a way to decrease the concentration of nitrogen dioxide. Again, this is obeying Le Chatelier's principle. To do so, the equilibrium position will move to the right-hand side in order to produce more N2O4. And by doing so, the concentration of N2O4 increases. On the other hand, if the concentration of nitrogen dioxide decreases, according to Le Chatelier's principle, the system will respond in a way to increase the concentration of nitrogen dioxide. So you can see what the system will try to do is to move the equilibrium in a way to reduce the change that has occurred. Specifically, in this case, the equilibrium will shift to the left-hand side in order to produce more nitrogen dioxide. So the concentration of nitrogen dioxide will increase due to this movement of equilibrium position. The next factor is changes in pressure and volume, which affect collision rate as well. But it is important to remind you that pressure and volume changes affect gases only. In addition, they also affect the side of the reaction that has more gas particles. So this diagram here is to remind you that when we have a reduction in volume or an increase in pressure, the side of the reaction that has more gas molecules or particles will always be affected by changes in pressure or volume more than the side that has less particles or molecules. Using the same equation, let's have a look at how we can apply Le Chatelier's principle when it comes to pressure and volume. An increase in pressure will shift the equilibrium to the side with less particles or less moles of gases. This is because when the system has less particles, the pressure of the system decreases, which is the opposite to the increase in pressure that we have at the very beginning. So in this example, the equilibrium will shift towards the right side and as a result, the concentration of N2O4 will increase and the concentration of nitrogen dioxide will decrease. On the other hand, when we have a decrease in pressure, the equilibrium position will shift to the side with more gas particles or more moles of gas. In this reaction, that is my left-hand side. So the equilibrium will shift to the left side of the reaction and as a result, the concentration of N2O4 decreases or the concentration of NO2 increases. Before we move on to temperature, let's have a look at how pressure and volume affect this reaction here. In this reversible reaction, hydrogen gas reacts with iodine gas to produce two moles of hydrogen iodide. Notice how we have equal moles of gases on the reactant side, so two moles here, 
and also two moles on the product side. When we have a reaction where the mole of gases are equal on both sides, the pressure and volume change will affect both sides equally. And as a result, the rate of forward reaction and reverse reaction will remain equal. And as such, equilibrium is not disturbed. From the collision theory, we've learnt that changes in temperature affect both the collision rate and energy of molecules in a system. And we also learnt that the effect of changes in temperature depends on one main factor, and that is the change in enthalpy of the reaction. So that is whether the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. According to Lachette's principle, an increase in temperature increases the energy in the system, which will favour the endothermic reaction. And this is because endothermic reactions absorb energy from the system, which is the opposite to what the increase in temperature does to the system. Vice versa, a decrease in temperature will decrease the energy of the system, which again, according to Lachette's principle, will favour the exothermic reaction, because exothermic reactions will produce energy. To the system. Let's take a look at this reaction once again. So the reversible reaction between nitrogen dioxide and N2O4 is an exothermic one. So an increase in temperature will favour the reverse reaction as it is endothermic. This, in other words, will shift the equilibrium to the left side in order to absorb heat from the surrounding. So what this means is that the concentration of NO2 increases while the concentration of N2O4 decreases. On the flip side, when we have a reduction or decrease in temperature, this will favour the forward reaction because like we said, the forward reaction is exothermic. This will shift the equilibrium to the right side in order to produce heat to the surrounding. In terms of concentration, this means the concentration of N2O4 increases while the concentration of nitrogen dioxide decreases. Lastly, not to forget the role of a catalyst in equilibrium. Since the addition of a catalyst does not disturb a system at equilibrium, as it increases the rate of forward and reverse reactions equally, Lachette's principle is not used when it comes to the addition of a catalyst. 